Happy July 4th, and it is Saturday today, you guys, and we're reading out of the Psalms, and you know, when I think of July 4th, isn't the greatest freedom we have on this earth is that we can be free from our sins, that we can be free from the condemnation we had before we came to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. And so as we celebrate the freedom we have in this country, I pray that we will pray for our country as well. And that we will live lives free of the bondage of sin so that we can help people find their as well. Well, we're reading out of Psalm 74 and 76. <clears throat> and I have to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, reading this reminded me of when my kids were little and they would do something wrong and they would endure a consequence for that and how they were then sorry, you know. So... Have you ever been sorry when you suffered consequences for something you've done? In that moment, the sorrow has to do more with getting caught than being sorry for our sin. This psalm was written, Psalm 74, about when God's people were filled with sorrow because the temple had been destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar. The psalmist is asking God to keep his promise, but God's people didn't keep their end of the promise. It's funny, we want our cake and we want to eat it too, right? Good morning, Vela. Good to see you. Hey, Bree. And so, but there's consequences in this life, just like gravity. You know, we drop an object, it's going to fall to the ground. If we choose to disobey God's word, we will reap consequences. What we so, God's people felt rejected by God because of their struggle, but it was them who had rejected God. Psalm 74 verses 1 and 2 says, Why have you rejected us forever, God? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you purchased long ago, and redeemed as the tribe for your own possession. Remember Mount Zion, where you dwell. The psalmist keeps pointing out that the enemy was destroying God met with us. We see this a few times in this psalm. And so sometimes when we read about the destruction and hardship on God's people, we feel sad and we don't understand why they had to suffer. And maybe we think about our own lives and we don't understand why they had to suffer. But our story isn't over and God knows the end. And we, we have the benefit of seeing this psalm, right? We read it, but seeing what ended up happening. So a lot of times when we read God's word, we want to go ahead and look. If you look online, uh, if you're on Bible Hub or BibleGateway.com, you will see in the column different scriptures that are related to the scripture you're reading. And you can see what God ended up doing for his people. So we don't have to read a scripture and be like bummed out. <clears throat> you know, man, the temple was... We get to see what God ended up doing. God always keeps his promises. And we have the benefit of seeing what happened after this psalm. So I wrote an article yesterday on Ezra 1 through 6, those chapters, and it was when the temple written up here in the psalm was being rebuilt. It's kind of neat how God does that. You know, we might be studying a different part of scripture and then we see how it ties in elsewhere. God brought his people back after 70 years and he fulfilled his promise spoken of in Jeremiah 29.10. This is what the Lord says, you will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. So right now, this snapshot in before and all the destruction of the temple, it would be later that we would see them rebuild the temple in an incredible moment in the book of Ezra 6, verse 14. But it would also be in Luke 20, that we would see the temple once again destroyed. Our hope can't be in a temple. It can't be in things of this world. We can make religion. God wants to have a relationship with us. So God's temple was rebuilt one day to be destroyed. But when God, people went astray, God lovingly allowed consequences. We might think, that's not love. But to let someone remain in their sin is certainly not love. And consequences get our attention, don't they? It brings us back. And it is when we're sorry for our restored, not when we're sorry for our consequences. 
God is always faithful to keep his covenantal promises, but if we sin, we will feel a rejection that we see written about here in Psalm 74 and 75. If we do what is right, we will be accepted. If you remember that from Genesis 4, verse 7. So, Psalm 75 and 76, guys, I know this is kind of tough because yesterday we were reading Ezekiel, judgment of God, and it's hard to read those things, right? We want to get to the good stuff. <laughs> Let's get to the good stuff and they obey, right? So, Psalm 75 and 76 speak of God's judgment. Many people think Psalm 75 is about God's people being thankful for God's intervention and deliverance from the king of Assyria. Remember him, Sennacherib? God's judgment is sure. Sometimes we can feel like it takes too long. You know, having to wait in the place of in-between. God's promises are yes and amen. But we're also benefactors of God's grace and grateful when God is patient with us, right? So the scripture of the day is from Psalm 75, verses 4 through 7. It says, I warn you to stop your boasting. Fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth from east or west from the wilderness should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. Hey there, Michael. Hey, Pamela. You guys, thank you for being faithful and joining in this Bible reading time. We need to be in God's Word, don't we? Even more, more and more every day. So as we talked about God's judgment yesterday in the Bible and in the book of Ezekiel, we are reminded in this psalm that God is still the judge. He is still on the throne. We can feel like we can have no effect on what is happening now in this world, but each one of us can live out our faith and be faithful to God and be obedient and choose to obey God so that maybe others around us can be impacted by that as well. God will judge nations, but God will also judge every soul. So I got this from uh, the English, the Easy English Bible Commentary this morning, just a little bit about what Psalm 76 is about. Sennacherib, who was the king of Assyria, was a very strong, Assyria was a very strong country to the north and east of Judah. About 700 years before Jesus came to the earth, Sennacherib attacked Judah, but God fought for Judah. Sennacherib did not win the war. Many of his soldiers died. This story is in Isaiah chapter 37 and also in 2 Kings 18 and 19. Psalm 76, like Psalm 46, 47, 48, and 75, is about what happened in this war. It tells us that God did not let the enemy destroy Jerusalem. In the psalm, there are two other names for Jerusalem, Salem and Zion, verse 2. Salem means peace or no fighting. Zion is the name of the hill where the Israelites built their temple. The temple was a place where they met to praise God. So, guys, Psalm 76, verse 11 through 12, has a fitting ending to our lesson today. It reminds us of who we should be faithful to. It says in 76, verses 11 through 12, Make and keep your vows to the Lord your God. Let all who are around him bring tribute to the awe-inspiring one. He humbles the spirits of leaders. He is feared by the kings of the earth. So the application for us today that I saw in these three chapters in Psalms is God is still in control when life is hard. And what we're living right now is not the end of our story. So if you're in a hard spot right now, like we saw in Psalm 74, know this. God is going to be faithful to his promises and he isn't finished with you yet. Isn't that good news? He's going to complete the work. And so when we feel rejected by God or we feel rejected in life, we can know that God is always good. And he's going to use those hard places for our good and his glory. God is still good when we suffer consequences for sin, our sin or someone else's sin that impacts our life. You guys, I hope that you're encouraged in the reading of this. Sometimes it's hard to read.